guys, welcome back. Uh, today we are doing the Swoon Brooklyn uh, handbag size. This was super fun to make. I did make another one the other day with an invisible video, so I thought I'd do one where you can actually watch. Um, I didn't do the shoulder strap uh, because I just didn't want to, uh, but the instructions do do it. It's only like an extra three steps really. Attach them on and then make a strap. Um, but if you'd like to see how I made this video, stay tuned. Alright guys, so today I am using the waterproof uh, canvas. There was a request for me to use it, so I'm going to use it today. Um, I don't know of any suppliers that are in Australia that you can just go in and buy it. Um, so maybe after coronavirus I could see if I could start putting it on my website. That is a problem for another day though. But I, so I don't have to interface this because it's got the PUL backing, so you don't have to iron it or anything. Uh, this color's called silver, which is like the light gray because there's also a gray. Um, I'm using a, it's quite a thick vinyl. I got this from a guy who was closing up his upholstery shop. But on the back of the base, this is the heavy backing uh, that you can get for, from Spotlight. It's like $10 something a meter. Uh, but you don't use a lot, so... Just buy a couple of meters and store it. Um, on the outside, I have used Form Fuse 1600 for the fabric. And then this is the double-sided iron foam. Uh, it's the Birch branded one, but you can use the other one that Spotlight has. It comes in like a short roll. I don't know. Um, right, so let's get started. So I'm going to start with my inside because there's not a lot to do to that. So I'm putting a zipper pocket in. My zipper pocket is 8 by 12 inches. I then fold it in half with the right sides together. Now with this stuff, the way to tell the right side and the wrong side is, I don't, you probably can't see it, but this side, the back is shinier than the front. So the back's got the waterproof coating on it and that's how you can tell. So I'm going to fold mine in half. And then go half an inch from that top fold and three quarters of an inch in on each side and draw a line and then I'm going to go three eighths of an inch down and make a box. So I'm going to make sure that the half that hasn't been drawn on is at the top so that our pocket will have an opening at the bottom. So you just want to level or square that up in the center. All right, so my stitch length is on two and a half. I'm just going to start in a corner, do a couple of stitches and back stitch. And when I turn a corner, I make sure my needle is down so I can pivot without it going off track at all. I do really like this waterproof canvas. Um, I can get it, I think, in nine colors. So they have blue, navy, red, dark green, the silver, gray, black, white, and fluoro yellow. I don't know who wants a fluoro yellow bag, but whatever. Alright, so I'm going to fold it in half and just make a little snip in the center of the box. And then open it out and cut down the middle to about half an inch from the end. And then I'm going to triangle out those corners. So you want to try and get as close as you can to the stitching without actually cutting the stitching. So by triangle the corner, see how it's got a little triangle? Alrighty. So you're going to push your lining through the hole. And I always stick my thumbs at the edges, like the short edges, and then push out as hard as I can. And that helps crease the fabric so it stays. Then I'm just going to roll it in my fingers until I'm right on that edge and then press it down. So 
I'm just going to finger press that. And then I'm going to score it with my fingernail to make sure it's got a nice crease there and will sit still. So then I'm going to take my zipper tape by the meter. I've already popped my zipper on. Now I want mine on, like, to open from left to right. So I'm going to lay it the way I want and then just sit this on top. And that happened because I didn't leave enough of a tail. So I'm just going to stick my hand underneath to make sure I'm pulling that lining out. And then just stitch it down. Make sure that tail is out of the way. There we go. Needle down, pivot around. Needle down, pivot around again. If your zipper head gets in the way, just make sure your needle is in the down position and then Lift your foot, lift it out of the way. Oops. Shut them off. And then I'm just gonna fold this down in half and stitch down the sides. So you're gonna make sure you back stitch at the start. Oh my god, I did it again. Apparently that's going to be the, the trick of the day. I'm threading my machining constantly. Make sure you backstitch at both the ends. And then trim off your tails. And then the same to the other side. Now you can pop your lining pieces aside and we can do the outside. So I am going to start with my accent panels. So the best way to ensure that they're not going to move on you is grab some double sided tape. You don't have to use a lot but you just stick it down. I use about three pieces. So all the flat edge parts. If you want to, you can tape all the curve. Um, but this is quite thick, so I don't think it's going to move very far anyway. This tape is from the reject shop. It was $2.50 for the roll. I also quite often use Woolworths double-sided tape. Peel the backing off. If you find your backing's not coming up, just rub your finger over it a few times um, to create frictional heat and that'll help it stick and the backing should come off a lot easier. I'm going to stick both down. I do love this bag. I did already make one. It didn't video the way it was supposed to. It did three minutes and stopped. So we're back to the reverse way. Uh, but unfortunately, at least I can see that it is still recording. All right, so I'm just going to stick both of them on. Line it up along the bottom edge. And then just push. I'm going to change my stitch length to three and three quarters because I want it more decorative. Um, I'm just going to start on the edge. Do a couple of stitches, back stitch, and then slow and steady wins the race with this because there's quite a lot of curving going on. You don't want to run off the edge. I'm 
hand cranking the ones that I know I have issues with. Then I grab the other one and do the same thing. And do a couple of stitches, make sure I'm in the down position and then just clip off the other one so it's not an added weight to what I'm trying to do. Straight bit you can obviously go a bit faster if you want to or you can maintain an even speed the whole way that might help you more. Make sure you back stitch so that they're not going to come out on you. Uh, if you want to, you can stitch down the other edges just within the seam allowance to hold it in place, but I'm not going to because I don't feel I have to. Alright, on to your strap connectors. Now I haven't done one because I just wanted to show you. So I, you need eight because you double side them, uh, minus stuff together with double side tape. Um, so I did three off camera, but I just thought I'd show you how I cut this one. So I take one that I've cut, and then I put double-sided tape on it in like a T. Down the center and then along the bottom. And then I'm going to stick that to my other piece and cut around it to ensure that they are 100% even. Now obviously they should be even because you're you know, using the same pattern piece, but you don't want like random little bits that are bigger or smaller. So my way of combating that is to cut four, stick four, and then cut around both those pieces together to guarantee that they are exactly even. Nice and easy with the corners. Beautiful. That side was actually a bit big. So that is now perfectly even on both sides. Pop that over there. Alrighty. So I'm using one inch gold thick rings. Um, these are thicker than the, my other colored rings. Just I accidentally bought different sizes. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to stick it in where the joint is. So there's a joint in the ring. I always like to hide it in the strap connector so there's no possible way that you're going to see it. And then I'm just going to clip both sides of that down. So I'm going to do that to all of them. It doesn't matter which way you twist these because they're vinyl on both sides. Just on and down. Oops! Throwing clips away today. Awesome. So now I'm, because my fabric is very dark, I'm going to use my Choco pen. Chaco? Choco. I don't really know. Um, so this is my template. I actually cut, I, I print out double and then stick them together. Um, I will eventually be laminating this. I just I haven't yet. So I'm going to lay my template over my piece of fabric and just mark where I want the strap connectors to sit. So I'm just going to mark the top line on both of them. Uh, if you're using a lighter coloured fabric, you can use a friction texture or you can use a chalk pencil or whatever makes you happy really. Alright, so now I can see where these are going to sit. I'm going to line it up. Now if you want to, you can stick another piece of double sided tape down the center on the back and then that'll hold it where you need it to be. Um, it's just whatever makes you happy really. So I, my machine can't, 
pivot around my metal and you're going to see what I do instead. So I start at the bottom in the center. I'm just going to do one stitch and go back through the hole. And then I'm going to stitch up and around the strap connector. I'm going to get to this edge. I'm going to go across the top. stitch and then stop there because my machine won't go back down the other side so I'm going to stop there trim that off because it's in my way and then come back the other way from the center at the bottom and stitch up My walking foot machine will go around this no problem, but because this is not that, this is just like a normal plain sewing machine, I can't get past the ring. So this is my solution to still being able to stitch it. Trim off your tails. And there you go. My strap connector is on. So I'm just gonna do that to all. Oh no, I rubbed my chalk mark off. That's the downside to chalk. It does come off. But at least you can see it on black. Okay, so line that up. I'm going to go this way first. It doesn't necessarily matter which way. Um, it's just habit for me to go this way first. Do a stitch. Back. Lock it in. And then slowly stitch around the edge. So I'm going about one eighth of an inch from the edge. And then across. Making sure that I backstitch and lock those in place. Trim off that side so it's not in my way. And then come back in and stitch up the other side. It might seem like it's a bit more time consuming. Um, and I could probably just switch over to that, but for the video, I want to show it can be done. You could even do this on a domestic. Just make sure you got the right foot on. So there's two. So now I'm going to grab our other side. Go again. I'm going to start with this one, mainly because I can see that chalk mark. The other one's kind of a bit gone. Alright, so line it up where we want it, stitch, lock it in, twist around, If your machine really doesn't like these kind of tabs, you could just put a different shape on. You could make them come up, so you could do the tab first and make them come up from here so they're coming out of the bottom panel. Um, it's your bag, make it how you want. There we go. Alright, 
line it up, stitch backwards. If you've got a speed control setting on your machine, uh, I suggest you turn it down for this so that you don't accidentally over stitch somewhere because that would suck. Now for good measure and decorative purposes, I'm also going to put a rivet through there. It's going to give added holding and it's going to look pretty. Double bonus. So I'm just cutting a hole in the center. This hole punch is from Bunnings. I did actually look it up on their website. They're $14. That's not too bad. Just cutting in the center. Okay. And then I'm just going to grab some rivets. I've got them here next to me for video purposes. It's currently living on the floor. I'm pretty okay with that. Alright, four posts and caps. So I push my post down through the front. And then clip the caps on the back. And then I'm going to grab my rivet press. Like so. Oh, it is heavy. I don't recommend having to lift it all the time. Just set it up on the edge of a table and leave it there. I just move mine for the video because otherwise I gotta move all the camera and the cords. And that's not fun. Awesome. Just a little bit of added bling. So now I'm going to take my long zipper, my lining pieces, and my main panels. And sew them all together. So I'm going to go back to the two and a half stitch length. I'm going to put my lining right side up, grab some wonder clips, and clip that on. And then I'm going to grab my top piece and lay it on top. So we're making a zipper sandwich. I really love that I get to refer to it as food. So, on top, and you can see all the threads you missed, chop them off while you're here. And so then you can just line up the edge and add it into the clips. I find this the easiest way to do it, because trying to line up three at a time is hard, but if you're just trying to line up the two, then you can just come in and open the other clips for the other one. Alright, so I'm going to start obviously at an end. I've got my foot up against my zip, do a couple of stitches, back stitch, back stitch at the end, pivot it around, open up just the top layer and bend it over the seam allowance we just created, and then I'm going to top stitch one eighth of an inch from the seam. Now you can iron it if it's giving you grief. Also make sure you back stitch at the end. Shuffle for my threads. There's one side. 
I'm going to do the same to the other side. So we're going to line up the lining with the edge of the zip. It also really helps if you've cut the right size zip, if you don't have excess, because you can just use the edge of the zip as your start and end point. Flip it on, grab the other one, make a zipper sandwich. And the reason I do lining up zip it up is because it's easy to remember it's all just facing the right way and then you just close off the lid with your outside piece that way you don't accidentally stitch your zip in the wrong way which i have done back when i was learning all right oh it didn't hold on to it as hard as i thought then tricky it's the day for it opens from both directions so you can unzip it down I'm also using zipper zippers with the holes I could lock this if I wanted to be super cute for the traveler size oh, I'm gonna sneeze okay so I'm just gonna split the zip open a little bit and then feed both sides into the zipper uh, this is off camera and you can't see what I'm doing. Okay, so I have a fork that's attached to a clamp, which is attached to my sewing table. So I put the zipper right sides up. And then you just want to feed both sides of your zipper in evenly, which is obviously the hardest part. Like so. And then I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing. So put my zipper in. Some people do a uh, zipper upside down. You can do it that way if you want. There's no wrong answer. You just want to get both sides in. I actually am quite fine standing over it. Helps me get it in evenly because I can kind of see a bit better. So there you go. The way to tell if it's good is because they both sit together and there's no bulge. Alright, back to the sewing machine. So to stop my zippers coming off, I'm actually just going to do a few tacks over here and here because trying to get it on later is a lot more difficult than trying to get them on now. So I'm not doing a lot of tacking, just enough so it's not going to come undone. Oh, I can't wait to order new snips. These are very blunt. Back and forth. Awesome. So leave that a bit open. But now we're at a how open because the zippers can't come off. Ho, ho, ho. Okay, so we're going to put our linings together. And the first place I'm going to clip is where the accent joins. So I'm going to clip the bottom, the top, one in the middle of all of that. And then I'm going to do the same to the lining. So you just want to clip it together at the top and the bottom and then the middle if you want to. Three makes me happy there. And then do the same to the other side. So I'm going to line up the accent panel first. 
because that's what you're going to notice if it's not even and together. You don't want it to look wonky at the sides. It's got accent parts on the sides. These things are important. All right. Bottom. Top. And middle for good measure. You don't have to put the one in the middle. I just am because it's a video. I probably wouldn't do it if I wasn't recording. So I'm still on a two and a half stitch length. I'm using the seam allowance that is given to you in the pattern. And off I go. Now I'm not going to cut that thread, so I've done the panel side, now I'm going to do the lining. I'm actually just going to jump straight across and start stitching the lining without cutting that. Because in fact stitching, I can just trim it later. Minus all me talking, it's actually a bit quicker. Flip it over. I always like to start from the outside and work my way towards the lining. That is a personal preference, you do not have to do it that way if you don't want to. But I find it easier. And stitch up, back stitch, needle up, jump across to your lining, make sure it's even, stitch, back stitch, and off we go. Ah, lovely. Trim off all your bits. Because I've just got them everywhere today. So now we're going to grab our lining bottom and I'm going to find the halfway mark and just do a little snip and then I'm going to fold it long ways and I'm going to find the halfway mark again and do a little snip. You can mark it with a pen if you'd prefer. I like the snip. It's effective. You can't lose it literally a hole in your perfect edge and then I'm going to find the center of the lining now that they're stitched together so I'm going to line up the two seams pull this out and then that there is the center little snip same with the other side so line the seam up pull it out there's the center So in the lining, we're going to put right sides together and line up our little center snips. And I'm just going to stitch the straight edge part of our thing. So we're not going to stitch the whole thing down. So I only need to find one center along a long edge. Back stitch, stitch down. And then when we get close to it, start curving, we stop. It's literally to just attach it there so it can hang out till later. So now we're going to move on to our bottom, our outside bottom. So the few things you need to do for the base. The first one is you need to add the side D-rings. So I have got a piece that is six inches because uh, it's going to be both of mine and I'm going to chop it down the centre. So I'm going to put double sided tape. I've already marked my center line. I did that while I was cutting it because I'm getting smarter at this. Put some tape down the center. Fold in each side. One, and two. And then I'm just going to sew with a longer stitch length, uh, which is three and three quarters, one eighth of an inch from the fold line. Spin it around, do it again. This is one of the few things I will not backstitch because I'm going to chop it anyway. So then fold it in half, chop it in half, grab your D ring. Whoopsie daisy. Preferably don't keep dropping everything. It's one of those days, I swear. So we're just going to put our D-ring on and you want to make sure that the join is in the inside so you don't see it. Like so. 
So then with our base, I'm also going to be putting bag feet in this. So I'm using four bag feet. So you want a pen? I'm going to go two, no, one and a half. No, I'll go two. So I'm going to go two inches from the edge and rule a line. Two inches from the other edge. And then I'm going to go three inches from that edge. Rule a line. So I've got this really cool square. And then everywhere it interjects, I'm going to stick a hole and put a foot. So I'm going to use my craft knife. Mine is a Kaiser Craft, which is from the scrapbooking section of Spotlight. Um, but you can get any kind of knife. You use a pen knife if you want. Whatever makes you happy. Stab the foot through and then split it open. So I try and make sure that none of these are going in the same direction because I hate for all my feet to fall out. That'd suck. Chop my hole. Put my feet in. You can stick a dob of glue if you're super worried that they're going to come out. Um, super glue. Epoxy resin. Whatever you've got lying around, really. Gem bond. Awesome. Now we've got bag feet. I'm then going to stick this at the end. Um, if you need to, rule another line to line it up. Um, I can see what's going on though, so it's fine. In the centre. Clip it down. And then you want to fold it in half and find the centre on the edges. And I'm actually just going to do a little, little snippy snip. Like so. I'm going to do the same to this. So to find the centre, I'm going to line up the seam and then do a little snip. You just need to make sure that that snip is well within your seam allowance so it's not going to show through and you've cut a giant hole. So mine's literally just the tiniest snip to prove that I can see where I need to line it up. So then we're just going to line up all our snips. Yes. I'm also going to make sure that the tops of my clips are facing the bottom. Because that's the way I'm going to stitch them and it's always easier to pull them off if they're the right way. You can just push the top and they'll come off. So I'm going to do three clips at each point to make sure that it doesn't move around on me. Three clips is more secure. Then I'm going to go to the end and do the same thing. So we're going to do three clips at the end, making sure that we've lined up everything. I'm also going to open this seam allowance. You could also trim it down if you want to, if you don't think your machine can hack it, all the layers. Uh, if you are using a domestic machine as well, you could consider using your side D-ring holders in fabric instead of vinyl, because that would, again, make it thinner for you. So then I'm just going to work in this corner. So you'll find that there'll be a little bit of bubbling in your fabric at the very ends. That is definitely normal, because we're trying to put a bigger oval into a smaller oval space. And the idea of your base piece is it's kind of not going to let it bubble any further than that. So I'm going to use a lot of clips. The more clips I use now, the less I have to worry about it later because it's all exactly where I need it to be when I'm going to stitch it. Then I'm going to go and do the same to the other end. Get rid of those. Split open the seam so it's flat there. Clip all of that together. And then just ease it on in. So 
last side and then we can stitch it down. Not really any such thing as overkill. If you feel that that's going to help you make it stitch better, put as many clips as you want. So I'm going back to a two and a half stitch length. Oh, because I want this to be holding. And then I'm just going to take out one of the clips on a straight edge just after the curve. So I can get it under the machine. Like so. And then I'm going to do a couple of stitches. Back stitch. And then I'm going to hold this up so it's going to be a 3D object and go around nicely. I actually don't want to flatten it out too much. We're going to get dodgy edges if we do that. So I don't know if you can see, but I'm still holding it up. It's going to stitch around this curve nice and smoothly and beautifully. I'm up to the end joining part. So your machine might need a little bit of a help to get over that much height. I'm just really paranoid I'm going to put my foot down too hard and snap my needle. I have done it before. It is a thing. Slow and steady wins the race sometimes. See, and we're flattening out, so that's one curve done. So again, we're going to help it lift up on the angle to get around the curve, taking off the clips as we go, whoops, that was my, my um, heel of my hand then, so I'm up to the edge join, it's stitching it fine, I'm just, I am paranoid because I have broken one too many needles doing this. And then just straighten out, join up with your original seam and backstitch. <laughs> so you can see it's all bobbly here, but from this side, you're not going to be able to see this. But from this side, it is actually perfectly smooth. So there's no nicks or joins or anything. Let's see if we can get in there and see. See? It's all lovely and smooth. So now I'm just going to trim off some of that seam allowance so that the bag's going to sit flatter. Um, you start from wherever. I'm going to start from a straight edge because it's easier to get to. And I'm going to use my class A scissors because they cut through bulk the best. I'm not sure why, they just do. Chop the excess off. Like I said, this is a very thick vinyl. Lovely. Alright, less of a seam allowance. Going to sit flatter. So now we're just going to turn our bag out the right way. So I'm going to grab that corner, turn it, push it into my hand so it's like a sock puppet, and then pull it through. Like so. Now this will be nice and smooth, but when you first pull it out, it's probably going to look a bit wonky. That's okay, that's normal. So what I do to help this sit flat is I'm going to poke it out with my finger on the inside, pinch it, and
and then just kind of do this back and forth to create like a nice crease. So this will make the, the side sit away from the base. I'm going to get my finger into that one. You might think I'm being rough with it, but it's for a good cause, I promise. And if this damages it, then maybe you should restitch it. See, it's going to sit flatter. Ah, oh, look at that. So I'm going to open my zipper pocket, stick my hand in, grab my base, like so, and then pull it through the zipper pocket, like so. And then I'm just going to stitch this shut. So you can pin it if you want to. I have done circular things so often I don't need to pin it anymore because uh, practice really does make perfect. So I'm just going to start back a little bit from where I started. And I'm just going to stitch the base together. I've also still got those snip guides as well to make sure that I am on check with this. Uh, but basically I hover one over the other at the seam allowance and it lines itself up nicely. Police it so much, it should just fall in. Although I have been known to hover like you know really close to it and it still misses. It is a thing. Trimming this down will just allow it to sit flatter inside the bag. Shove that back into the bag, and then that into the bag. What's wrong, honey? You want bubbles? Hold on one second. Right, the bubble crisis is averted. So we're going to take our pocket lining and just turn under that raw edge and then stitch the bag shut. And do a back stitch. Oops. I'm also going to put a tag here. Hold on, honey. I'm coming. Hold on a second. All right, stitch that shut. Give me another sec. OK, I'm back again. So, now that you've stitched your pocket shut, push that back inside. And because I see how my zippers have gone all the way to the edge, that doesn't matter because we put a stop to them falling off. Because I'm so clever. Just want to zip it up a bit. Of course, this one doesn't want to play ball. Out you come. There we go. Excellent. So now we've just got our edge pieces and our straps. So with our ends, I am going to use a lot of tape. So I'm basically going to put it on all six straight edges. Um, but there's a process I do. I do the long ones first. Then pull off the backing. Hey, 
Mike. What's going on? You can do play with the stars. Please don't do that in here though. Not in here. You can go play the stars out there. I think he wants mommy's attention. It's been nearly an hour. Mommy. Yes, honey. Alright, I'm gonna hit pause and I'll be back. Okay, baby, all fixed. So I'm gonna stick both of them. So I drew the, the the long sides first, and then I have to peel off the back because the end the end one will go over the tape a little bit. So if I peel those off first and then put the last of the tape on, nothing gets tricky. To admit this is very sticky tape for the reject shop i like it oops there we go all right so now we're just going to fold in all the edges now i do the the long edges first both sides and then fold the top down like that uh, but you could do the top first and then fold the sides or whatever makes you happy. I like doing it this way. So I'm just going to do one and then I'm going to stitch it. So with a three and three quarter stitch length, I'm going to stitch all the way around the edge. And I'm going to have the right side facing up. I'm going to do three stitches, go back into the first one. And then stitch about an eighth of an inch from that edge all the way around. Now when I get to the center, I want to pivot and turn it the other way so we get like a crisp bit. And a nice crisp edge. Same here. So down, pivot. There's one done. And chop off the tails, give them a melt. You can touch it, it's not too hot. As long as you haven't done like a really long tail you're trying to melt down. But that's what we're aiming for. And do the same to the other side. One and two and down on top. And the best way to know where to fold this to is you're just trying to fold half of this little flat edge here. So you fold it halfway. Whoa, that spun way faster than I thought it would. All right, so it's all down. Start in the corner again. Oh, tricky, you tried. Two, three, and then back into the first hole. And then I'll turn my machine on and off I go. I don't normally would turn my machine off as much as I do at the moment, but it makes a noise when I'm trying to talk. Oh, that was close. Nearly off the edge there. Luckily for me, that's the bottom side anyway. But you still want it to look good. Alright, chop off all the tails, melt them down, touch them so that they're flat and not sticking out. Then you want to grab your swivel clips and shove them in. So I tend to just fold mine in half and force it through pointy ends first. And then make sure that your flat side is on the inside like that. Isn't that cool? So I'm going to stick both of mine on. Now, obviously, I don't stitch mine down. I did try the stitch once. I didn't like the lack of neatness. It was probably me and not this thing. But so now I just rivet it. 
So I'm going to stick it on the edge. I want it to be centered both there and the bottom. So I want to center this line in the center of the zip when I hold it. And then I'm just going to hold it in place. So I want it to just be on the fabric. And then I'm going to punch a hole and grab some rivets. So I might grab them first. I have them in little drawers. It makes it a lot easier. Now, I'll try and do this from the side so you can see what I'm doing. So first thing I'm doing is I'm flattening it out so that the seam and the zip line up. It means they're centered. Then I'm going to grab this and I'm going to make sure that my join side, so that's where the join is there, where the, th uh, the thread's a bit thicker, is underneath because I don't want to be seeing it. I want the pretty side up. Line them all up. Pinch a, punch a hole, not pinch a hole. And then, what's wrong with cat boy? So I'm not going to press them just yet. I'm just going to put both sides in. And then stab them through and then I'll grab my rivet press and squish them all down. And I'm going to go check on my child because he keeps calling. We made it almost all the way to the end. Anyway, grab the press. Then you just want to stick your rivets in your press and squish them. So I'm actually going to put three on each end, but I do the two, press them, and then come back for the third. So I've got the two on the end like that. Now I want, I don't want this to gape like this, so I'm going to put another one down the bottom. So I'm just going to center it. Punch a hole. Oh, sorry, you can't see that. Right. Stick in a post. Stick on a cap. And then press that into my press. See? And then that will come down like so. And pull the edge of the bag down. I love it. So, same with this side. So I'm going to pull it out so that that is lined up with the center of the zip. Put this on the other way because I want my join underneath where I'm not really ever going to see it. Not that it's a big deal. You just want it to look nice. Then I'm going to punch a hole, actually. Punch a hole. Make sure it's the same distance from the corners as the other end. That's pretty important. So it's just on like that. Punch a hole. I have to twist mine because mine's getting a little bit blunt. And I don't really want to go to Bunnings right now to buy another one. Put your cap on. And then do the other side. Line it all up. Punch your hole, post in, cap on, and then squish it. And then we just want one down the bottom to hold it all together nicely. And again, you can try and stitch all the way around. It is a thing. It's just not a thing I do well. I can never get it to look as neat as I would like, and I found that this way looks much neater. And then that onto there. The bag's nearly done. Now we just need to make the handles. So I'm going to do half and half handles like I always do because it's my favorite at the moment. If you were going to do all fabric, you do need to interface the fabric so it's firm, so you've got a nice handle. Or you could do all vinyl. <gasps> Actually, what you could do is you could do all of red. I'm just having a thought and then put a blue strip. I think I might do that. Oh, now I'm in two minds. Do I want a red with this? 
or do I want red with a blue strap to match my zip? No, I've cut it, I'll do it this way. All right, so I'm just gonna have to pause it once more while I go and iron this, and then I'll be back. We're all ironed up. So now, I would like my ruler back, and pen, and I'm gonna draw a line down the middle. So I'm doing two inch strap, uh, one inch strap, sorry. So I cut a two inch strip by 24 inches because I like long straps. That's just me. Uh, the pattern says shorter, so feel free to actually follow the pattern. Um, but all of my customers always ask for long straps, so that's what I'm doing. Not that this is for anybody. There's a good chance I'm gonna keep this bag. It's adorable. Not that I need another bag. I have a lot of bags already, but I suppose that comes from being a bag maker. Do you guys keep your bags or do you gift them away or do you sell them or? All right. I don't know if you just saw that, but I rubbed really hard on the very edge uh, to heat up the glue, make sure it's going to stick. And I just tore my backing. So now I've got to try and pick that off. There we go. So I'm going to do one strap at a time because this is a thicker vinyl. I know that this double-sided tape won't hold it for very long. So I'm going to bend the vinyl over to the center line. Uh, if you were doing all fabric straps, you could iron it in half and then open it up and iron both sides into the center crease that you made. All vinyl or all fabric straps would still look super cute on this bag. I just like vinyl. I think it's going to rain here. It just got very, very dark and gloomy outside. Not that it matters while I'm in here, but you never know. All right, so three and three quarter stitch length. Grab one of your ironed pieces. So I'm going to make sure that the, the raw sides are on the inside. And line it up with that end. And I'm going to stitch the short end first. Do three stitches. Go back into the first stitch. Stitch to the end. So then I'm just going to hold it in the center. You could definitely use... Um, double sided tape and stick it to the center of this which is probably what I should have done it's a bit late now it's got some fluff on it oops a little bit more than I bargained for there so I'm just going to tuck under the end and apparently I didn't cut this as long as I thought I did or I overcut my vinyl. I'm actually not sure which. I cut it last night when I was sleepy so who knows. Stitch down the other side. The other side always goes faster. It's just how it is. I have a sneaking suspicion I'm going to run out of bobbin thread before I get through the next strap. So I'm actually going to check that now because I don't want to have joins on my strap if I can help it. Oh no, there's heaps left. That's good. Means I got through a whole thing without needing a second bobbin. That never happens. And I just drop the other strap because I'm clever like that. Alright, peel off your backing. And then again, fold the vinyl to the center line that you have created. Try not to stick your finger like I just did. Ooh, and again, what can I say? I'm a different kind of special today. All right. That's one side. 
flip it over, go again. sides, roll sides together. I'm going to hand crank three, go back through the first one. Apparently I'm going to hand crank that whole small edge, it was only five stitches anyway. And then just center it and st I'm stitching about one eighth of an inch away from the fabric, which is you know, quarter of an inch from the edge, theoretically, if all goes to plan. When I get close to the edge, I just want to tuck the other raw edge under. Oh, I think I just got fluff up my nose. Alright, and stitch down the other edge, making sure that it's all tucked under and nice. <gasps> Yay! Melt the ends. Touch them. They're not that hot. Then I'm just going to grab my strap that fell on the floor. And I'll just grab some things. Give me one sec. Alright, so we just have to attach the handles now. So I got my pen, a ruler, and my rivets. You could also stitch it on if you want to. So I'm gonna measure half an inch from the end and then one inch from that mark. Oh no, one and a quarter, because these are the bigger rings. So the thicker rings require a little bit more space. So I go half an inch from the bottom and then one and a quarter inches from that mark that I just made. I'm going to do that to both of them. Whoops. And I'm going to drop it again. So half an inch. And then one and a quarter inch. So the skinnier metal, I just do one inch. Because um, I have different thicknesses in my rings. Cool. And then we're just going to punch all of those holes. One, two, three, and four. So you'll notice I'm squeezing and twisting. Mine's starting to get blunt. I will buy another one soon. Alright, so then we're going to go up from the bottom and then put the rivet on. Hey mate, have you come to help mommy? No. No? Then I'm going to put the cap on and then I'm going to squish the rivet. So then I'm going to go make sure it's straight. Come up from the bottom, put a post in, both sides, put a cap on, and then squish it. Oh, I think my husband just got home as well, it's all happening.
So there you go, I have finished the bag. That is all done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Bye.